guys doing? Hope you guys all are doing really great. Uh, today I'm going to make a video of our physiological section and uh, that is about the cardiac cycle of the heart. Because most of the first year students they're saying that they want to understand the cardiac cycle so if they, I can make a video for them. This is for all those students who want to have a, a knowledge about the cardiac cycle. Uh, before uh, coming into the physiology of the cardiac cycle, one should know a little bit of the anatomy of the heart. So this is basically the anatomy of the heart, which I wanted to show you guys. Uh, you have studied heart in like in your high school, mid school uh, classes as well. So you all may be familiar. That basically, the heart is a four chambered structure. It consists of the two upper, one is on the left side and the right side, which are the right and left atria. And below here you have, uh, this is the right atrium, this is the left atrium, this is the right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle. And between the right atrium and the right ventricle, you have a tree valve that is called the tricuspid valve. And between uh, your left atrium and the left ventricle, you have a two valve structure called as the bicuspid valve. Um, that was about this. Uh, we know that it consists of four nodes. There is SA node, which is present on the wall of this right atrium. Here you have then the AV node, then you have the bundle of His. The bundle of His then will divide into the Purkinje fibers, which will supply your right and left ventricle, respectively. So that was a little bit about the anatomy of the heart. You will study a detailed knowledge about the anatomy of the heart in your thorax section of the anatomy. Now coming into the physiology. First of all, we should know what the cardiac cycle is. Um, basically, the cardiac cycle is shown in your physiology of guidance by this diagram. This whole replicate what is known as the cardiac cycle. Now, uh, you all will be like, what is this diagram showing? So, I'll explain this diagram. And also, I'm going to try my best to make the cardiac cycle really easy for you guys. Before coming into this detail, what, you should know two basic things. What is cardiac cycle? What is systole? What is diastole? So cardiac cycle, basically as here it has been shown here that cardiac cycle is that the heart contracts for some time and then relaxes for some time. So obviously, for example, this is the heart. Let, wait, let me show you from here. Um, for example, you have... All right, this is your heart, okay? So this heart has to contract as well as relax. So this contraction and relaxation is of the heart is called cardiac uh, effect, right? This is done by the cardiac plexus, and they cause the heart to either contract or to relax. Now, when a heart contracts, it is called systole. And when this heart will relax, it is called as diastole. And this systole and diastole is very important readings for taking blood pressure of a patient. Now, why we say the term cycle? We say cycle because it does not stop. If it contracts, then it will relax and then again will contract. After relax, it will not stop. It will continue. There will be contraction, relaxation, contraction, relaxation. For example, when you are breathing or when uh, your heart rate, when you are beating, like you are having tension. So obviously your heart rate is increasing, increasing, increasing. After you finish your viva, you give a great viva, you come relax. But your heart does not stop. It will contract, then relax, contract, relax. And there is how your blood pressure will be measured. So that is why it is called as a cardiac cycle. Cycle means stop and then again and to stop. And cardiac because it is related to the heart. That is why altogether it is called as the cardiac cycle. Then we studied about two important terms. What is diastole? The state of contraction of the heart and um, systole and diastole is the state of the relaxation of this heart. Then uh, what is the time duration? How much long does this heart contract? So the heart, it contracts for about 0.3 seconds and then it relaxes for 0.5 seconds. So that total 0.3 plus 0.5 will give you 0.8 seconds. That is the total duration of the cardiac cycle in which how much it relaxes and how much it contracts. So if they ask you what is the time duration of the cardiac cycle, you will say for 0.3 seconds this heart will contract and for 0.5 seconds this heart will relax. So total will be 0.8 seconds. Now, 
uh, in your physiology, they also told you this diagram that this is going to show the relations of various effects with the cardiac cardiac cycle. These first three curves, you can see these um, this one, this red color curve, these dotted black color curve, and this uh, one, uh, this one. Oh, sorry. These upper black dotted line, this lower black dotted line, and this red curve. These three are the first curves which is showing, this is showing the erotic pressure, how much pressure is present in the erota. This one is showing how much pressure is in uh, your atria. And these one are showing how much pressure is in the ventricle. And all of them vary with the uh, cardiac cycle. Then you have this blue valve which will indicate a ventricle volume when the volume is decreased, when the volume has been increased. Then, you have, let me show you clearly. Then you have this one, uh, these yellow. These yellow lines are showing your electrocardiogram. Now, what is an electrocardiogram? Electrocardiogram is a very important instrument which is used to measure the heart. So it is comprising of this one. This is shown here. This is your electro Q wave, R wave, S wave, and T wave. P P no, sorry, P wave. P wave is known as the atrial depolarization. Q R S is a, your ventricle repolarization, and T wave is the ventricle depolarization wave. What happens in the P wave? That in the P wave, the atria, what are they going to do? Is uh, that they are going to... In your P wave, there will be the atria that are going to contract. So, for here, you have these atria, right? So, these atria are now going to contract and pump the blood from the atria into the ventricle. And the uh, wave that we will examine on the instrument is going to be this wave that is known as the P wave. Then you have this complex QRS wave because the ventricles do not relax because they already blood is coming so they have to contract it. That is why then they will generate this RS wave and we together say this is known as the QRS complex and ventral repolarization because ventricles will immediately contract and pump blood from the ventricles into your pulmonary trunk or your erotic heart. Once they have pumped, the ventricles are going to relax so there will be depolarization and you will get a wave known as the T wave. Now, the device that is used to help you hear the heart sounds, that is called as the phonocardiogram. That was the relations of the different types with the cardiac cycle. Now, what are the factors that affect the cardiac cycle? It is basically uh, the heart rate. It is not how much distance the heart comes or whatever. It is going to be on the heart rate. And what is its relation with the heart rate? It is that it is directly proportional. So cardiac cycle is directly proportional to heart rate and inversely proportional to the duration. If your duration is prolonged, heart rate will decrease. When its return will decrease, cardiac cycle will decrease. If your duration is less, your when its return will increase, cardiac cycle will increase, heart rate will increase. For example, uh, let's say when you are in a stress condition, let's say you have your exam tomorrow. So obviously you'll be in tension, you'll be in stress. Obviously your heart rate will increase. If a number of beats is increasing, heart rate increases, obviously your cardiac cycle will increase. The next day when you finish your exam, you give a great job, you're relaxed, heart rate will decrease and your cardiac cycle will also. All right, now we're going to study about the phases of the cardiac cycle. First, we're going to divide the phases of the cardiac cycle into two. One is the ventricular diastole. When this ventricle, it is going to be relaxed. Second phase will be when the ventricle contracts and will pump the blood to your semilunar valves. That is the erotor in the left atria. And on the right side is the pulmonary trunk. So first, we're studying about the ventricle diastole in which the ventricle is in uh, your state of rest and the atria is going to contract. The first step or the first phase in ventricular diastole is your isometric or isovolumic relaxation. Now what this is indicate that in this one blood is coming into your right atrium from your superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, from your coronary sign and empty into the right atrium. So in this state the atrium is also relaxing, the ventricle is also relaxing, the valve that is present between the atria and ventricle, atrioventricle valve, is there closed. The valve between the ventricle and the semilunar valve, uh, erotor, the semilunar valves, they are also closed. And what is the state of the atria? It is relaxed in diastole and blood is filled in it. Now, once the blood it enters from the superior vein, 
and I take away into the right atrium or in your left atrium. So obviously the pressure in this atria is gonna rise up. Due to the rising of the pressure in the atria will go and force these uh, uh, your atrioventricular valves that is present between the atria and ventricle, your bicuspid and tricuspid valve to open. Once they open, the blood will flow from the atria into the ventricle. And this flowing of the blood from the atria into the ventricle due to opening of the atrioventricular valve filling phase. This is the rapid filling phase. Now immediately blood will flow from the atrium into the ventricle. Now, once the pressure in the ventricles who are already in a state of zero are at rest, the blood is coming in, so obviously the pressure will increase. So once the pressure is increasing in the ventricles, means more and more blood is entering into the ventricle and less amount of blood is present in the atria. So pressure in the atria is decreasing and in the ventricles is increased. This state is called as a, your slow filling phase. Same, the atrioventricular valves are open, semilunar valves are closed, and atria is in the state of diastole. Then we have a fourth phase that is and that is called as a, your augmented filling phase. In this, what happens is now due to slow filling phase, so obviously your SA node, which is the pacemaker, it will be stimulated to pump more and more blood from the atria into the ventricle because we want the atria to be empty for the uh, atrioventricular valves will close. Closing of this atrioventricular valve will generate the first heart sound that is called as the love sound, which will be heard by the stethoscope. And this state is called as the isometric contraction period. The second period stay phase is called as a rapid ejection phase. As already the pressure in the ventricles is so high, so obviously it will cause the semilunar valves to open and it will eject the blood from ventricles into your aortic arc. So obviously the pressure will increase, they will contract and pump blood into the aortic arc. This is called as the rapid ejection phase. In slow ejection phase, there will be the remaining of the blood that is present in the ventricles. They will now we have the period of slow ejection phase. In slow ejection phase, the pressure in your aorta will increase more than the pressure in the ventricle. As a result, blood will pump from the ventricles into the aorta from low pressure to high pressure. Once the blood has been passed from the uh, ventricles into the aorta to prevent metric contraction, there is obviously we know that the blood has passed from the atrium into the ventricle. Now in the ventricles, there is so much blood that the pressure in uh, your ventricles will increase. Due to increase in pressure, they will cause the most, some of the blood will try to go back into the heat. In order to prevent this backflow, the sac flow, the semilunar valves will close. In this state, when the semilunar valves will close, a second heart sound will be heard by the stethoscope. And once the blood that is entered into it, uh, then obviously the ventricles will relax and will go back into the isovolumic relaxation phase. And again, the cardiac cycle will start. Now, at the end of the cardiac cycle, there are three important terms which you all should know. And diastolic volume, your stroke volume output, and your end systolic volume. When there is filling of the ventricles from the atria, the volume in the ventricles may increase more than 100 to 100. That volume is called end diastolic volume. Then when, when the ventricles will contract and pump the blood from the ventricles into your erotic arch or pulmonary, there will be a decrease in the volume of the blood up to 70 milli. That is called the stroke volume output. And at the end, after the contraction, the remaining blood that is present in the ventricles is about 40 to 50. That is called the end systolic volume, the amount of volume that is present at the end of systole after ventricular contraction. That was all about your uh, cardiac cycle. Hope this helped you in understanding it and made it easy for you. Thank you. The augmented filling phase. In the augmented